we're going to be using the unit circle to find theta. Yesterday we used the unit circle and looked at an angle to find a ratio, but today we're going to do the opposite. We're going to look at a ratio and find an angle. So we're trying to find what theta is. Before we get into actually finding those answers though, we want to ask ourselves why do we have these restrictions down here? Why are we saying that if we're trying to find theta, that it has to be between 0 and 2 pi, and notice the zero is included and the 2 pi is not. And in degrees, why is the 0 included and the 360 is not? Well, remember we talked about when we were doing coterminal angles, and briefly with reference angles, that you could really keep going around this unit circle infinite times. So you could have infinite upon infinite answers, which I know to many of you is not thrilling. So if we artificially restrict finding our angles one, go, by going one time around the circle, so meaning if we start at 0 and go all the way around to 360, or start at 0 and go all the way around to 2 pi in radians, then we can limit the number of answers. And the reason why 0 is included in 2 pi or 360 is not, is if you think about if you start here and you go all the way around your circle, if you land here again at 2 pi, 0 and 2 pi are coterminal angles, so you would be saying the same angle twice. So we are only going to say one of the angles, and we just chose to pick 0 over 2 pi. So if you're dealing with anything on this line, you're going to pick 0 over 2 pi or 0 over 360. So that is why you really need the restrictions, because there's infinite answers. But how many potential answers will there be from the restrictions that we chose? Well, I'm going to erase what I did here on the uh, unit circle and talk about something else. Let's look at, because my favorite is sine of 30 is 1 half, let's go there. So if I look at that the sine of 30 is a half or the y value is a half, let's see in one revolution around the circle how many other times we get the y value to be positive 1 half right here, and that's it. Let's do another one just for good measure, pun intended, I guess. So if we looked here at positive root 3 over 2, so the cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2, let's see how many more times in one revolution that we get a positive root 3 over 2 as an x value. Not here, not here right here. So both situations in one revolution, we had the one half repeat twice and the positive root three over two repeat twice. That is going to be a common pattern all the way around your circle. So how many potential ang uh, answers? Well, for each one, it's a possibility you could have two um, answers in degrees or two answers in radians based upon what I ask. So that is very useful for what we're about to do. So if we want to find, uh, use these wonderful examples here to find theta, I picked them on purpose because I think it's a good mix. So if we wanted to find theta where sine is root 2 over 2. So what we're really asking ourselves is what angle are all of these situations occurring? So Remember, sine really means a y value. And we're saying where in one revolution of your circle is the y value positive root 2 over 2. So let me scan. Here it's positive root 2 over 2. Here it's positive root 2 over 2. But that does not exist as a y value anywhere else. So if you tell me what angles does that exist, in radians, you would tell me that my two answers are either at pi over 4 or 3 pi over 4. And in degrees, you would say the answers are either 45 degrees or 135 degrees. The next example with cosine, we're trying to figure out the angle that the cosine or the x value is negative 1 half. So if we look at our unit circle again, let's scan around the circle one time. Let's look for the x value being negative 1 half, right here, right here, 
And again, we usually said there's a max of two times, but let's make sure. Yes, the two, no two locations where the x value is negative one half, the angles that it exists at in radians would be 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. In degrees, the two answers would be 120 degrees or 240 degrees. The tangent problem. This one, again, I would definitely say is sneaky or a trickster, and here is why. If you look, square root of 3 over 3 is not any of the ratios that we see around our unit circle. But I do notice that this answer has a square root of 3, and you might notice that every 30 and 60 angle has a square root of 3 somewhere. So this probably comes from one of those reference angles. So tangent, remember, is really the same thing as y over x. So we need to do a little bit of trial and error. It's either going to be a 30-based angle or a 60-based because we know these have a root 3. So either the y value is going to be a half, we're going to take 1 half divided by root 3 over 2, or the y value is going to be root 3 over 2, and we're going to divide it by the x value 1 half. So I want to do both these situations and see which one looks more familiar to this. So if I take 1 half, just to skip a step, you're dividing by this fraction, so you're really multiplying by the reciprocal. This is 1 over root 3, which is root 3 over 3. That looks promising to this. Let's do this one as well. This really means root 3 over 2 times the reciprocal of a half, 2 over 1. So that's just root 3. So this situation we gained from the um, 1 half being the y value here. So this is the situation that looks more like what we have here, except for tangent is negative. Um, you may recall that tangent is positive in the first and third quadrant because it's positive divided by positive and negative divided by negative. Tangent is negative in both of these quadrants. So I know my answer either has to be in the second or the fourth quadrant, or maybe both. So because you took the y value divided by the x value, which was this situation, we want angles that are only base 30. This angle is a multiple of 30 in the um, second quadrant. And let's see, this angle is a multiple of 30 in the fourth quadrant because the tangent is negative there. That's how I know I want those quadrants. So it looks like my answers in radians would either be 5 pi over 6 or 11 pi over 6. And in degrees, my answers would be either 150 degrees or 330 degrees. Cotangent of theta equals negative root 3. Now, because cotangent's related to tangent, I'm guessing this logic might come in handy again. Before I do so, though, um, something that I tend to use is I prefer thinking about everything in terms of sine, cosine, and tangent. So before we even start, if the cotangent of theta is negative square root of 3, that means that the tangent of theta must be the reciprocal of what I have, which is negative 1 over the square root of 3, which is the same as negative root 3 over 3. I'd say that's a very exquisite example, considering that we just found the tangent of theta equals negative square root of 3 over 3, and we found that these angles were the answers. Well, guess what? We are finding again, where is the tangent of theta equal to negative square root of 3 over 3? I put these next to each other on purpose because you get the exact same angles for a second time. So theta is again 5 pi over 6 or 11 pi over 6. And theta in degrees is either 150 or 330 degrees. If we keep going with these next four, secant of theta is the reciprocal of sine. Excuse me. Secant of theta is the reciprocal of cosine. So if I'm thinking cosine, I'm thinking x value. 